Welcome back to another video. Now, I need to put a windbreak up around the veggie patch because it's getting a bit windy. So I need to <laughs> protect them. Um, but I made a, well I pointed out in a video um, recently about my windbreak and how I, I, me I briefly mentioned I'd never seen any like um, very clear instructions on how to install a windbreak. I just I couldn't find anything. So my first one, which you, I'm gonna flip the cam camera around and I'll show you. One second. All right. So my first windbreak is there in my junk pile because <laughs> it was like it would flap around in the wind all the time, and every time it got fairly windy, um, there'd be a lot of friction between the staples and the net itself, uh, which would cause. Well, obviously the friction is going to cause tears, and there was one day I, I woke up in the morning and the whole thing was like flapping out onto the road, which is pretty dangerous. So I'm going to show you how I've done this one, which I'm really happy with, and I don't think I'm going to see any tears at all. Now, so we're going to begin by putting in the fence posts. Um, there's three tools that I have for that job. Uh, so for me, I have a lot of rocks in this area and also I have the clay. Now it's been raining so the, the ground has softened up a little bit. But always handy to have this and you never know if there's going to be a big rock uh, right where you want to have a post. So I use this just to break up the ground and make sure that the space is clear for my posts. Uh, another handy tool is these augers. Uh, not entirely necessary, but I just think it makes the job a lot easier as well. So you can just drill drill into the ground and pull out a lot of the soil and clear the way for the post as well. Um, finally, you can use a sledgehammer or... Uh, I prefer this guy. This is the fence post rammer. And you get a nice clean top on the fence posts and uh, it's just a lot easier just lift it up and just use its own weight and drop it down um, with a sledgehammer you can if you're not uh, accurate with it you can split the tops of your fence posts and it just looks very ugly so this is a lot easier it's a lot safer to use this as well and just more effective And there you go, first post done. Now there's my post in, and I just need to pack in around that just to secure it in place. But that's fine, that's done, and now I'm just gonna do this corner down here, that corner over here, and then I'm just gonna fill in like two in between, kind of break it up into thirds. I'm not too concerned about the distance between the posts here, 
because I don't get the worst wind over here. But like if you do have strong winds, the closer your posts are, the more secure your windbreak is going to be. But I think about three meters is a nice distance. That's what I did over at the road there. All right, so that's it. All the posts are in. Uh, this one, this one here gave me a lot of trouble. And there is, I don't know if you can see clearly because of the mud, but there's a massive, massive rock right there. So I had to move the post over a little bit, but that gave me a little bit of some issues. There's another rock there. Uh, so I had to dig it out and get the shovel, um, or the spade, I should say. No, shovel. No, spade, sorry. <laughs> the spade. And then, yes, there's like always this puddle right here. So that hole's filled with water, so I need to fill that in, but... We are done. We're gonna go on to the next step now. All right, so that next step, we need these guys, your fencing staples. And I like to use a hammer and a fencing pliers together. Uh, fencing pliers are cool. There's the hammer face. There's these crimping and pliers bit. Well, this, that's for gripping. You can cut your wires with that there. And then you got the hook for pulling the staples out if you need to. Um, also handy, you can leave them stuck into the, ooh, the top of your fence post like that when you're not using it. Um, right. So I'm going to put a staple on the top of every post. So I've measured my post out. Um, one second. I measured the post out. I have this wooden dowel that I've cut to the length of the windbreak so when I was uh, hammering the posts in I was making sure that I wasn't going too close to the ground you want to leave a little bit of air underneath so I've measured it so I can put the staples at the very top of all of these so I will begin so I like to use both of these together because I can hold I've hammered my finger so many times <laughs> doing this but I can hold my staple with the fencing pliers like that and then you can just hammer in like this so I just put my staple in place like this just to get it started there we go and We don't want to go all the way in, we want to, uh, let me show you. There you go, we want to leave that little loop there. Now I'm weaving the, um, I'm going to weave the windbreak in and out of these posts just to give it a little more strength depending on the direction the wind's going to be coming from. So that's why I'm going either side of the, let me flip that over, either side of the post as I go down. And obviously you don't want to go too close to the top of the post or you're going to split it as well. So, how's that? Now, I just realized I did something wrong. <laughs> uh, I should have just Ran, so I need to f secure this galvanized wire across the tops of all the posts. I should have tied off one end and then stapled the wire to it as I go down. It would have made things a little easier for me, but I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to feed feed this wire through. Just feed it through all the eyelets that I've created. So I just need to make sure I don't get any kinks along the way. That's all. To solve this problem, I just put this around a stick so when I pull on the wire, it's not going to get any kinks in it.
Now, one second, I'll show you what I'm doing here. Whoop. So, I'm sure there's a professional way to secure this, but I'm just going to do what, whatever works. Whatever works, works. Yeah, where's my pliers? Ooh, it's in my pocket. There we go. Now, so I'm just going to make a loop like that. So I can pull that tight up against the post. And then just pull it tight on the other end and secure it off. Now, so I'm just going to cut a length off of this that I can work with. Pull. There we go. Pull this wire nice and tight. Now, pull it back around like this. One second. I'll get that tighter. that back through. Get that kink out, one sec. There we go. Now yeah, there we go, we got a nice snappy line and whoa, in my experience anyway, when you're pulling the line you're going to loosen up the post a little bit. So I'll just stick some shims in there just to help secure the post and push it back into place which will also help to tighten the line that little bit more. I had to do the same thing on this corner post here. Yeah, just hammering a bit of wood there. There we go. Now, next thing we're gonna get our windbreak and we're gonna to start to secure it to the wire. Right, now this is where we get to the stage where things are gonna get a little bit tedious, but this is where we, we're gonna start attaching the windbreak on. So I'm just gonna begin with a cable tie. Actually, I should show you first, shouldn't I? Get the wind brakes that have, can you even see with my black, there you go, these loops on them and then you're going to use these cable ties through these loops to secure it to the wire. You're going to begin first on these eyelets that we put in with the staples. So you're first, you're going to secure it to that staple and then we're going to go to the next staple across the way and then secure it along the wire itself as well. So I'll show you that now. So now I've secured that there, we roll it out. And then when we get down to the next post, we're just going to pull that fairly tight now. Oh. Find the loop that you need. That one there. Just put the cable tie through there. Through your eyelet. Now, there you go. And then you've got it secured along 
there and then I like to put one cable tie in the middle and then one in between there as well. So now we need to secure this corner down and we're going to go one post at a time until we're done. Alright so I'm just going to put another staple in at the bottom. I just need to, one second, make sure. There we go. Then we're going to have that nice and tight so I'm going to put it around here. Perfect. Now I'm going to do my three along the top. So I like to just go somewhere in the middle. Just like this. Somewhere in the middle here. And somewhere in the middle over here. Right, now I'm down at the next post. I've already secured some of this wire down to that first post that I just worked on. And I'm gonna need to, there we go, put another staple in right around here. So, right around here, what I'm gonna do is, when I'm stapling, I'm gonna staple the wire through there, so roughly there, ah. there we go, now so my wire is secured, whoa I don't even know if you can see, there you go, my wire is secured through that, so now I'm going to again cable tie this down onto that staple. So I'm gonna repeat this all the way down the line and then I'll show you how we secure everything off at the end. Now, there we go, they're all connected. Now I haven't done the, the clean up yet, so I'm gonna do that with you. So with this first one, I just gave you a little preview of what to do with these three. So I've got to do that on the bottom here. And I'll show you how to clean up this guy here. So, oh, look at that. There's a beetle, whoa. Ah. Let's see if I can get it to focus. <laughs> There we go. Um, yeah, so even here, right, whoa, let me get that back. No matter how tight you pull this, it's still not, there's still gonna be a bit of slack on it sometimes. Um, it's just the nature of the netting, like this is going down on a slope, so the two uh, holes that you're securing your cable tie to are going to cause twists which is going to make that happen so I'll show you how we how we're going to clean that up now all right so we're going to do our three cable ties like I did on the first one so I'll just get one in the middle one in between the middle and post right here sorry I know you can't see me just give me a second. And the other one, let's say, around here. 
Right, and now I have this slack there which I need to fix. Alright, so now I just want to give you a closer look at what to do. So you just pull and get that fold there. See that? Now that's our excess. And we just get a cable tie through there. Whoa. And through the loop again, that eyelet that we made with the staple. And we can just pinch that out. And there you go. That'll make us have a nice, a nice tight section of windbreak there. And if this, if this bothers you, you can fold that in again just to get that flap out of the way, but it doesn't bother me too much as long as the, the windbreak is working. So I'm just going to continue down the line and do that. And I'm also going to secure along the, uh, the bottom wire as well. Now I'm after trimming off all of the cable ties. It's really starting to look like a garden now. Very happy with that. So we've got our windbreak done. And yeah, there's gonna be no rips or tears because all of the connections are just held on like that. So there's not a lot of friction happening where you're gonna get rips right in the middle, which is what was happening to me before because I had those staples just kind of going right through it. And then the wires, having a wire on the top and the bottom prevents like wrinkles and ripples happening throughout the whole thing. Um, which I found to be a real distraction. <laughs> I couldn't help but look at my windbreak every time it was windy because I could just see the ripples. So this is just nice, clean and steady. Like it's windy right now. Not so windy, but there, you can see a little bit more. So it's a little bit of a windy day and there's zero movement happening on the, on the uh, windbreak. Now, so that's it, I'm gonna leave it there. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.